Hey everyone, it's Jack here with another YouTube video. In my very first video, you noticed that I did just purchase the 2023 Subaru Crosstrek Limited. It was just a quick walk around. This video is just gonna be going into some of the upgrades that I've done in the last week and a half or so. You'll notice probably some substantial differences from the last video. So we're gonna be jumping into that, so stay tuned. So right off the bat, you're probably gonna notice these change in wheels and tires. I think they look absolutely stellar, especially in contrast with the overall pearl white car. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about some of these wheels. So these wheels are the Method 502s. Seems like every other Crosscheck owner is putting these on as well, but I really like just the, the color, the design, the way it looks against the white. It just has a really great feel overall, and it was reasonably priced. And so with this wheel, I actually downgraded to a 15 inch wheel diameter. And this is from the Crosschecks, a limited standard size of 18. So it went down a couple inches just so I could fit the bigger tire on. And as for these actual tires, so these are the Toyo Open Country AT3s. So the size is P225, 75, and then a 15. So the other contender to the Toyos, you've probably seen them before, it's going to be the BF Goodridge KO2s. You know, everyone's throwing KO2s on the Crosstrek. However, I decided not to, simply because the KO2s, they only come in a size labeled as LT, which is light truck. And so what that means is there's a little bit more padding, a little bit more rigid sidewalls on the KO2s. So 95% of my driving is going to be on the highway anyways. I do a little bit of off-roading, but like I said, it's nowhere near as much as just normal driving. So I didn't really see the added benefit of getting those bigger KO2s or some bigger, bigger Toyos as well. I wanted to keep it practical while still having a rugged and a kind of aggressive look. And I think I achieved that with these, with these tires. Let me know what you guys think. If you think maybe the KO2s is worth it, let me know. I'd be happy to check it out. So if you're confused at all by the numbers, you know, when I'm saying 225 or, or light tire or anything like that, I'm gonna leave a link in the description with a post that I've found on the internet, which perfectly goes through the tire sizes, the wheel sizes, what's gonna fit, what's gonna rub, all of your options. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and they're all designed for the Crosscheck itself. So it was super helpful for me in deciding what tire and wheel combo should I go with? Am I scared about rubbing, stuff like that? but highly recommend checking out those links below. Okay, so you, you may have noticed that the car is sitting a little bit taller. I did install the ADF 1.5 inch lift kit and I think it looks great. I decided not to go with the two inch lift kit. One, for fuel economy. Two, I thought it, they just didn't look as good. I thought it was a little bit too tall, especially if I'm just doing a lot of highway driving. Didn't really see the reason just for that extra 0.5 inch clearance. So yeah, this is the ADF and they are just spacers. So the spacers just sit on the struts, on the top of the struts, and I'll actually show you guys that here. Oh man, look at that engine bay, so clean. I've never seen an engine bay this clean. Okay, so anyways, the ADF spacers, you'll see it right there. Bam, it's sitting right here. This is an inch and a half. It's on the other side as well. And if you actually take a look underneath in the wheel well, you'll notice this fine piece of metal right there. You know, this is actually the back spacer as well. And then I also got the multi-link, which is underneath, uh, supports the subframe as well, just for added protection. It was a little bit more expensive, but I think it's well worth it. So one thing that unfortunately I wasn't able to do is the mud flaps. So the mud flaps I had purchased, I was just gonna install them. Everything looked to be fine. I didn't expect there to be any rubbing, but unfortunately, if you take a look at that clearance, you don't got that much room. You got about an inch and a half at the most back there. And so what was happening is you'll see these little screws on where the, uh, where the mud flap is supposed to go. And the screw that I had was sticking out a little bit and was catching on the tread. And I was afraid it was actually gonna rip off the mud flap. So it wasn't worth it for me. However, without these mud flaps, there is a little bit of rubbing uh, with these 225 wheels. And it's just barely in here. So you'll notice these kind of grooves that stick out a little bit. When I'm making a U-turn, just a, just a little bit of the tread will briefly scrape it. Nothing too bad at all. I don't mind it. it. It only is there for a second. It's not consistent. 
And so another thing I might do is just take a heat gun and push these back in a little bit just to prevent any touching it whatsoever. But for now, it's totally fine. So the last thing about the wheels and tires are these lug nuts. I actually purchased these from a guard and you just wanna do a quick double check and make sure the lug nuts are correct for the new wheel you are buying. Because if you're buying an aluminum alloy wheel like the Methods, you're not gonna to wanna to put on lug nuts that are designed for steel wheels and vice versa. So you just wanna double check, confirm. I'm sure it'll be all right, but it just it's always good to do a quick double check. I have noticed just a slight increase in the cabin decibels, the noise in the cabin with the new wheels, but it's not that big of a deal at all, especially if you're even listening to music. And if you, you probably wouldn't put on bigger tires if you were someone who liked a quiet ride anyways. However, I do notice that with the lift kit, it just, it, it feels so much higher when you're driving. It feels more rugged, it feels capable, especially with the wheels. I can feel the wheels when I'm driving. Don't know how to really describe it to you, but I like it. I can feel it on the turns, it grips better, and I sit higher. It just feels like a more capable vehicle with the, t with the tires and the lift kit. So it, there is a noticeable difference in how the car drives. In terms of the miles per gallon, very similar. These wheels do not weigh an astronomical amount and I don't have a spare just wrapped onto the top. There is a slight decrease, maybe one or two miles per gallon, but keep in mind that there's only 300 miles on this car so far. So the data is not gonna be super accurate. Okay, so the next modification we're gonna look up is the Harbor Freight. I guess it's called the Hallmaster, I didn't even know it was called that. But yeah, I just picked this up from Harbor Freight. It was the cheapest roof rack on the market, to be honest. Most roof racks you're looking at 120 minimum up to like $900. And I noticed, I purchased actually a couple of them. So I noticed that the Harbor Freight, which is $99, is very similar quality to a lot of the roof racks in the $150 range. Almost the exact same design and they just swapped out the logo. The only downside to this is really the wind noise. And I read some reviews that poss possible rusting, you know, there's not a there's not a protective coat on here, so if this rusts and drips on your on your roof, that could cause a problem, but you know, just keep an eye on it. There is a little noticeable difference in the wind noise though when I'm on the freeway. I can definitely hear it, it's whipping around, but it's not something that's unmanageable. I think if I was on a road trip more than five hours, then I'd probably take it off. But other than that, it's really no big deal. So I know I mentioned this in the previous video, but I wanna mention it again. Factory installed was a 35% ceramic tint. And this is actually one of my favorite upgrades. And the reason being is I've noticed so much difference in the amount of heat that is trapped in the car. I park my car outside, unfortunately, and it gets blasted by heat. And when I hop in after a hot day, it's actually manageable. It's not like 150 degrees in there. So another reason why I recommend the ceramic tint is you know the leather so we want to protect our leather we want to protect the dashboard and if you don't have anything to really filter out these these harmful uv rays it's just going to go straight onto the leather it'll probably dry it out after a while or maybe damage some electronics within the dashboard itself so i want to do everything in my power to protect it since i park my car outside unfortunately and the ceramic tint does the job for me so besides the all-weather floor mats, which I love, I'm just not a fan of those cloth floor mats. The only other upgrade I have on the inside is this little tray right here. It pops right out, Oops, oopsies. It's about $20 on Amazon. And you'll notice this center console, it doesn't really have that much room. It has like a, just a deep pocket and that's it. I wanted something for coins or maybe a, my wallet, something like that. It's $20, worth it for me. All right, guys, that wraps up the video. Thanks so much for sticking around. Please, if you're in the process of getting new wheels, tires, any of these things that I've already done, and you have any questions, let me know, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. I just went through this whole process, and it was uh, pretty fun, but learned a lot as well. And if you have any suggestions for new upgrades to do, I know somebody suggested LED turn signals, which sounds pretty cool maybe blocking out the grill. There's a whole bunch of things we could do. So let me know what you guys think and I appreciate it. Have a good one.